In my last video, I said I was going to try to add a, um, a GFCI to the champion generator I mounted on my tractor to try to make it a little bit safer in the wet, but I found out the hard way that doesn't work. Um, went to Home Depot and I bought this, uh, you know, they had one for the end of a power cord that was rated for portable generator use and for outdoor use and everything else. So, you know, I picked it up and I figured I could just throw it on the end of an extension cord and you know, have a some a little extra protection with the generator, but um, as you'll see, you know, later on in the video, it just um, it's made to work with outdoor power equipment, but it just will not work with my generator. So the um, you know, the plug was pretty cool, little plug. It's a uh, you know, got the terminals there and everything to wire in, and um, you know, it looked like it would work out real nice. It came with a back cap and. Um, you know, in the little bag there with the cap, there are actually some different strain reliefs and different seals just for, um, you know, seal, being able to seal it to be watertight with different size cords. And, you know, while I was out, I went to Costco and I found this two pack of 12, three, 50 foot cords for um, $29. It was unbelievable. I had looked in Home Depot and um, the 50 foot cords were like close to $40 each. And um, so I thought this was a really great buy too, so I picked up a pair of them. But anyhow, I, I had an old extension cord I decided I'd try this with. Um, it said a, you could use a maximum 50 foot cord with this plug. So I, you know, I had one that had the plug broken off already that was 50 foot long. And I just took it and followed the instructions on it and <clears throat> cut all the wires back and put the proper size seal in place here you know so it would work and then I just um followed the instructions that came with it to you know hook the wires up and everything and like they said in the instructions if you've never done this before you might be best to get an electrician to do it but um anyhow it was pretty you know fit on there nice and compact and um I thought it was going to be a, a great solution so that's what it looks like on the end of the cord and you know a little bigger than a regular plug but at least it adds some additional protection so there so here i am i plug that into the wall and now i have this uh tester for wiring to check and you can see there that the um the wiring is done correctly anytime i mess with electric i use this tester and then there's a button there to test the uh, gf CI capabilities and you see when I pressed the button it worked instantly so now I went out plugged it into the generator started that up and um, as you can see it's showing a fault there on it um, and when you press the button nothing happens I get absolutely um, no no GFCI tripping or anything else it's showing a hot neutral reverse situation there so um you know, I see that it says floating ground on the generator, so I decide to, you know, just kind of hook a wire up to the, the little ground terminal there that they tell you that you don't need um, because it's not really required on this generator. They just use the, um, the I guess, the hot and the neutral leg. Um, but I just wanted to see if it made a difference, so I put a wire on that and just wrapped it around the tent stake. And uh, it had recently rained, so the ground was pretty wet. So I, I figured I'd, you know, at least get some kind of a ground on there. You know, show a situation like uh, I was standing with a tool and stood in water. So I started it up again and um, took and put the tester back in. There it is there and didn't make a difference still getting the same uh, the same fault in the GFCI still will not trip when the button is pushed um, I did decide to try a couple other power tools to make sure they'd you know work with it and wouldn't trip it or anything but they you know here's the chainsaw I had laying around for probably about 40 years and that that plugged in the 15 amp chainsaw I think and it ran perfectly and you know then I had just grabbed another my hedge trimmer that I usually use and I want to use with the generator and just plug that in and you know there was no problem GFI that TFCI didn't affect it or anything but um you know all they saw was the the error on there so um it looks like uh this generator you cannot use a GFCI interrupter with it um 
I see they have a floating neutral thing written right on there and apparently that's part of the problem uh, I did try calling champion and I got put on kind of like hold and they said it would be over an hour wait so I I hung up on that but I'm gonna try calling them back again and see if there's anything that can be done but um, from the looks of it um, these generators were completely different than an electrical system in your house and uh, there does not seem to be any way to protect these uh, any better than what they are with the isolated ground now um, some people asked me about why I mounted the generator the way I did and I just wanted to show you how the exhaust actually blows out that side there and the, the back of the generator there um, just kind of has very little airflow going through there so it was the best situation for um, you know mounting it the way I saw for airflow thanks for watching please subscribe